Sometimes you do a run and halfway through you're like, man, I'm dropping a lot of cool items. This is nice. You think about it some more and then it hits you. You still have streamer loot turned on. Streamer loot is a script you get to run when you start uploading Diablo 2. There is no other way to get it, mostly because it's just made up and doesn't exist. But you just need to be posting Diablo 2 stuff on the interwebs for it to work. In my quest to beat the game using every single set, today is a beautiful day to go and try a run with Irata's Finery. So to explain, this is a normal solo cell found run as usual, except that I'm giving myself Irata's and have to wear it all the way through. I'm honestly not sure on the power level of this, so this could be a challenge run, a showcase or a shit show, who knows. I start off the run by buying a 3 socket hunter's bow and opening fire on Rakanishu. Him immediately halving my life total indicates to me that he is not pleased about any of this. Luckily, cause my channel isn't a democracy, I can just ignore his opinion and shoot him anyway. The hunter's bow was bought cause it's the fastest bow you can buy at Chassis. I'm gonna put a bunch of chip gems in it to start off, and I'll buy a second one of them later on to put some tail runes in. Skill wise, I'm going to start off as a physical bow as on, meaning that I'm going to spec into multi shot and guided arrow. Multi shot makes your bow shoot multiple arrows. I know, it's wild, and only cost about 1 billion mana per shot. To get things set up, I go and say hello to the counters. My order this time consists of 4 tail runes and an ether rune for a stealth and a triple talbo. She happens to be in a good mood and starts giving them away like fentanyl laced candy. Once I hit level 15, it is time for the star of this show, Irata's Finery. So what's up with this set? First off, we have Irata's Coil, the good set crown. This is a level 15 helmet that has 30 lightning resist and 30 fire resist. I've completed runs wearing this one before, give it a socket later on and enjoy the 90 resist helm. No complaints here, this thing is awesome. Next up, we have the amulet, Irata's Collar, which is, well, less impressive. It has 30 poison resist and 75 poison length reduction. As a bonus for wearing multiple items, it at least gives 15 resist all, making it a 90 resist amulet, which is fine, but I would have loved just, well, more on this. It only has two mods, it's so much lost potential. Third up is the gloves, Irata's Cuff. With 30 cold resist, these round out the resistance set of giving 30 to everything. They also give half freeze duration and as a multiple item bonus they get 20% increased attack speed, which is pretty sweet. The final piece of the set is the heavy belt. I don't know what to tell ya, this thing sucks, it gives 5 minimum damage and 25 defense, which is basically fuck all nothing and it gives 10 dexterity as an item bonus, which is the best mod on it, but still isn't very good. The full set bonuses here are pretty sweet though, 20% faster run walk, a very unique 24% piercing attack, which is the whole reason I went and did this run as an amazon, 50 defense, 15 more dexterity, 10% extra to your maximum resistances, meaning you can now get up to 85 resist all, and a very solid 20 of it is stacked along as well. This design is amazing, it is very obviously skewed towards an amazon thanks to the piercing, but can absolutely be used by any class that wants it for its resistances. I wish more sets were like this, except for the belt, fuck the belt. I complete my triple tail set and get my next bow ready. 3 tail runes in a bow gets you 226 damage. The piercing from this set and multi shot will synergize to make me hit almost everything on the screen once I hit level 17. The counters farming gets rounded out with a tail and an ether rune, allowing me to make a stealth. This has faster run walk, some dexterity and 30 poison resist. A great deal for just a tail rune. Streamer loot starts making itself known in the catacombs level 1 when a unique scepter drops from a sarcophagus. This is a Nell Striker, a level 5 weapon with dual resistances and crushing blow. Probably the best early game weapon in the game. Once I hit level 17 I get to equip my triple tail bow and my stealth. With over 230 damage and almost maxed out resist all, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm not too worried about normal. Not only am I not worried, I am blatantly overpowered at this point. But we all know, normal isn't the part we should be worried about. After making my way through the maggot lair, I get cornered by Fangskin in the Claw Viper Temple. He gets funneled by the jars and I can just poke him down, which I can't do with Duriel. My only strategy here is to shoot him once and then run away until the poison damage runs out. Rinse and repeat a million times. Sounds easy enough, but Duriel has a holy freeze aura. I'm slowed down all the time and can barely outrun him. It's also an empty arena, meaning I can't lock him up behind anything or something strategic like that. All I can do is the old spray and pray. It ends up taking a while, but the poison does its job and I win the fight. 
Multi-shot cost about 1 million metric craptons of mana for every single shot. So I get myself a 3 socket armor and jam in a couple of flawed sapphires and a tear rune to compensate for that. It takes a bit for the poison to do its poisony thing, but that doesn't mean the council stands a chance or anything like that. The council rejects and the Durans level 3 drop a set ring, which can either be angelics or trash. Turns out it's angelics. Mephisto is just durial but easier, my resists are so good that he is barely dealing damage to me. It's all just a matter of dodging the attacks and waiting for the poison and it's a wrap. He drops a broadsword and a dirk. The dirk is the diggler. A dual res, ignore target's defense, 30 increased attack speed dagger. Somewhere out there a poison dagger necro just had the weirdest erection. Speaking of erections, the broadsword is Griswold's edge, a sword intended for close combat with knockback, so make of that what you will. Our rare play the belt with 24 faster hit recovery, 25 lightning resist and 8 fire resist drops in the chaos sanctuary. I would love to use this, but instead it is just a painful reminder of how much of a piece of trash the belt is. There's not a lot to talk about during the Diablo fight, just like the Dural at Mephisto fight it's just a matter of waiting on the poison while dodging the attacks. He ends up dropping me a gold wrap, which I can't use, cause of the stupid Herathas cause. Don't worry, I don't like using dual res belts with some life either. Nothing to see here, let's move along. The first big wall, or in this case door, comes with a door. These are immune to poison, so I can't deal any damage to it. Luckily I am the danger and the one who knocks, so the door gets shot. A close call happens against the ancients when I get whirlwinded straight through. This will never happen again ever I swear. The fight gets troublesome when I run out of stamina and another whirlwind comes crawling through my skin. My wounds did heal though. Oh, by the way, to suppress the mana cost of multi-shot a bit, I've been specking into Guided Arrow, which is the skill you've been seeing on the screen for a while now. The Guided Arrow skill is a skill where you shoot a Guided Arrow. It's very abstract, but I hope I explained it properly. Stat-wise, I'm at 60 strength and dex while putting the rest into vitality. The run almost ends because a totally unavoidable boss trap gets triggered somehow randomly, spawning a group of Might Blood Temptress way too close for comfort. They end up forcing me back where a second pack of them is waiting. I end up running myself into a corner. Everything is looking grim with no way out, but the poison ends up winning the damage race and I live to meme another day. My survival skills have become less than impressive at this point. Some random death lords get too close too often. And I have to admit, everything has fallen off hard at this point. I decide to go to town to pick up Jamali so he can tank for me. He lasts about 4 seconds, but I'm used to that, so it's fine. Monsters in Diablo 2 are on a leash, meaning that they can't walk too far away from the leader of the pack, allowing me to just shoot them from afar without trouble. Speaking about no trouble, Bale dies. We head into Nightmare. I bring a souvenir from Tristram and the local tourist trap gives me some junk that I don't need for bothering to visit. In the meanwhile I've started specking into peers, for additional piercing. I would love to explain more, but these skill names are just very on point and leave no doubt. Tower runs are a massive struggle at this point, but they have to be done for the next weapon. It's a good thing that is coming up, cause every single corner is a battle for survival. While I wasn't looking for it, I did end up finding a 4 socket crystal sword and the runes for a spirit, which I can just give to an act 3 mercenary. It ends up rolling 31 faster cast rate. Jelani joins the team and gets a complimentary stealth as a welcome gift. Just like every single first day at a job ever, his stuff isn't ready yet, so I go and save the barbs for the Rel Ort and Tal rune. A 3 socket gothic shield ends up dropping as well, perfect for an ancient's pledge. Don't have a helm for him though. Seeing the tower is terrorized, I figured I might as well partake. I end up finding a 30 lightning resist ring and a 2 socket razor bow, which, while not the one thing I'm looking for, does allow me to upgrade my weapon to a Zephyr. Zephyr isn't exactly a big damage kind of weapon, but it has some crowd control with the twister procs, some more run walk speed and a bit of lightning damage. It's not great, but the triple talbo wasn't even making a dent in a pack of butter anymore, so it'll do for now. It ended up taking a few days, but admin has finally found Jelani's helm, so I go ahead, make the lore for its plus 1 to skills and 30 lightning resist and give it to Jelani to use. Honestly, with a spirit, an ancient's pledge, a stealth and a lore, my man is fully decked out for the rest of the run. And now that I have some more mana, I switch back to a stealth myself as well. I go full Sandor Clegane and steal the smith's shoes while he's dying. I take them to Charcy for an imbue and end up getting dual res boots with half freeze duration. 
Antario drops a unique composite bow, which is the Rogue's Bow. And if this is the kind of weapons they were using, I get why they lost. This has 50 faster attack speed, but you can attack with 6 to 12 damage as much as you like, it still won't be good enough. This would need to do triple or maybe even quadruple the damage to be relevant at all. I currently don't have anything better, so it begrudgingly goes on my second weapon slot. New hires can get all the gear in the world, they still won't know how to deal with things. Jelani is having a rough go of it in the mega lair. He starts off miles away from the fight and finishes up the fight by shooting into a wall. When I lure things back for him to get a clean shot, instead he walks away and does nothing. <sighs> Dear lord, interns am I right? A set hunter's guys drops. This is the Alger Helm. That yes, I will do a run with at some point. I've already got it planned out, which thanks to my ADHD means I will either do it all in one go tomorrow while blatantly disregarding everything else I need to do, or forget about it until the comment section reminds me in a few years. The Tar Rusher's tomb reminds me that I am about as durable as wet toilet paper when a single gore belly pimp slaps away half my life total without even trying. Good thing I cannot run Jelani, so it's his problem now. Later on in the tomb I need to go take a piss, so I go and make the town portal back to town. This town portal was perfectly fine when I left it. When I came back however it wasn't. Skeletons right next to me, core bellies everywhere, I'm fully stuck and getting pounded by everyone. Not the movie I signed up for, so I go and leave the game. With 38 life left, this was fine, nothing wrong here, let's move along. Good thing I went pissing before though, means I don't have to change pants now. Turiel attacks whoever is closest to him, so just like before, all I need to do to survive is outrun Jelani. In the end I decide to just tank him or die trying. Instead of good loot, the only thing Turiel ends up dropping is my life total. The war spear is an impaler, which is meant for an impale zone, a build whose existence I will deny till the day I die. Spirazons don't have any synergy with the Aratha set, so I won't be using this. The armor is a Venom Ward, one of many items that is stacked to the tits against poison and thus gets outclassed by drinking an antidote. Jelani pulls through hard when he finds a razor bow in the spider forest, finally a bow that will get 4 sockets from Larsark. During prep I don't have a soul rune, luckily a quick counter skill solves that little problem. Back in normal I give Larsark the bow, so he can poke 4 holes in my stick with a string on it. Cause that makes total sense. Seriously, look at the placement of those sockets on that. In real life, this thing would be unsavably destroyed. Oh well, video game logic. With the inside bow made, I finally have a bow that at least pretends to do reasonable damage. It only took 241% enhanced damage to look kinda good. The meditation aura also helps with multi shots insane mana requirements. Back in the forest I grab the git bin, and as a reward I get a ring that is just the same ring I was wearing, but better. Thanks to the meditation aura I am able to wear the 30 lightning resist ring I found earlier as well. Fire is lagging behind a bit, but the resistances are looking amazing. The flayer dungeon is just pack of dolls after pack of dolls. It's a good thing I can still outrun Jelani, and even with that it ends up being way too tight for my taste. In the Durants, the dolls obviously haven't forgotten about me as they prove their love is strange, but so real in the dark. I don't want to tell them my troubles or doubts, nor do I want to give them everything inside and out, so I don't call out their name while I walk away. I should have left on streamer loot on a different run, cause Mephisto tells me he loves me by dropping a unique salad and pavis, two of my personal favorite items in the game. The Pavis is Gurky Sanctuary, the best in slot shield for an energy shield sorceress, thanks to its resistances and high damage and magic damage reduction. The Salad is a rock stopper, which might just be my favorite helm in the game. I don't know why, but I love this thing so much. It just does it all, hit recovery, vitality, fire, cold and lightning resist and even 10% physical damage reduction. I would love to use both of these, but I can't due to being an Irata Boazon. Thanks game. At least the helm can go to Jelani. The outer steps start out strong with a portal shrine to make sure I don't get lost 3 feet from the entrance. My search for Isual gets a bit tighter than planned when I pull aggro on just about every single monster in the plains. The Infector of Souls fight becomes a giant mess cause my damage is already falling off again. It ends up with me dragging them one by one through the entire sanctuary. All I can say about this is that I wish bows were better. The physical bow is on is so much fun to play, but the damage output for a solo self-found run has some severe room for improvements, to put it mildly. 
The Diablo fight is free as long as you stand in the right spot and move when he throws his firestorm at you. So despite the damage being low, this is still a very easy fight. He ends up dropping a longbow, which is Ravenclaw, a good bow to start a boa sock off with, thanks to its explosive arrows that get boosted by your enchant skill. I have neither the enchant skill nor am I a sorceress currently, so yet another fun unique goes in the garbage. Shenk is the one to finally drop me a unique bow that even has some damage. The large siege bow is Cliff Killer, which has 2 to Amazon skills, 230 enhanced damage, some additional damage, knockback and 50 life. With its total of 44 to 166 damage, we are finally going to be able to put a dent in things. I will have to put some points into strength though, but that's what farming is for. My stash has filled up, so it's time to see if I can do some crafts. While gambling rings to craft with, I end up gambling a 7 all res ring with some more lightning resist on it. The craft ends up being a 9 lightning resist 26 fire resist ring, I'll take both of those. After farming a bit I get to 80 strength allowing me to equip the cliff killer. Look at that, I'm finally dealing damage, this is the good life for sure. Well, for me at least, the ancients are probably not too happy about it, with me shooting them in the face a bunch and all. No problem for me though, the Valk easily tanks them. The throne has a bunch of almost cloaked dolls, the color choices here are truly unfortunate. My damage is solid though and I make it to the bale waves. The second wave ends up dropping me a ground charm, it turns out to be a defensive aura skiller. I love finding skills but is there even a build that uses these? Jamali tries his best during the bale fight, so the Valk and me decide to pretend he did good while we finish up the fight. My gear is already pretty good, so let's just see how hell goes. Resistance wise, things aren't looking too bad at all. The fire resist is quite low, but the others are all looking fine. My damage kind of makes me want to cry again though. Even the Den of Evil is a massive fight where I end up having to take on every single monster in a one on one fight to the death. It needs to be better, so I decide to head into a level 85 area to see if I can find anything at all. There is no way I'm going to survive the pits with this. So to the mausoleum I go. A monarch drops from a group of skeletons, making me realize that javelins synergize even better with the errata set. Cause the javelins like the piercing and cause you are wearing a shield the increased maximum resistances actually make sense. I'm also just kind of over how long everything is taking to die. The monarch has 4 sockets, so I decide to see if I can gamble a decent javelin. It takes 2 tries to get a rare javelin with plus 2 to skills, so in the span of 3 minutes I have found a better javelin setup than I had after 2 difficulties with the boas on. If anyone thought blizzard didn't have favorites, I don't know what to tell ya. I head back into Nightmare to farm the runes for a spirit and roll my 25 faster cast rate spirit. It's fine though, the amazon doesn't care about it at all. This is all about the plus skills, extra vitality and resistances. Spirit doesn't have fire resistance, so I go to Larsuk and put a socket in the crown for a Rao rune, adding an additional 30 fire resist. At my respec I put 156 points into strength to wear my monarch and the rest of my stats go into vitality. Skill wise I put points into pierce until I hit 69% chance to pierce. I follow it up by maxing lightning fury and charged strike. The rest of my points go into the valkyrie. Cause I don't want to run out of mana I go and hire a Lisa and give her the inside bow, a stealth and the rock stopper. As a damage test I decide to walk up to Treehead Woodfist, whom just evaporates on the spot, perfect. Walking through the black marsh a shale rune drops, which allows me to make the peace rune word, for an additional plus 2 to my skills. It does mean I have to start keeping track of which Valk is on the field, but that isn't enough of a downside to not take the extra skills. Where Treehead Woodfist pull up no fight at all, the cairn stones are a giant mess to get open, everything is lightning immune and the might and holy freeze auras aren't making things any easier. I end up having to kite rock an issue away, come back from the waypoint and bob and weave through the enemies to hit the stones. I fall back while waiting for the red portal. It turns out I went back too far and the red portal just isn't there. No clue how that happened or how to solve it, so true to my IT route I turn it off and on again. Next game the portal is there, no questions asked. Rakanishu isn't lightning immune this time either, so I go and repay the kindness he did to me and the Templar code drops from him. This is the guardian angel, it has plus 1 to paladin skills, some extra block chance and a better max resist bonus than I get as a reward for wearing the entire set. Which is nice, I love that for me. I can use this to get to 95 maximum resist all, which would definitely be cool, but I'm ok with 85 and would like to keep my plus 2 to my skills. So to Aliza it goes. The Antario fight mostly went fine. 
just a matter of using the lightning immune zombie to my advantage by using him to power up the lightning furies I'm throwing at her. He isn't extra fast or wholly free, so I can just kite around him. The curse makes the fight a bit tricky, but nothing too terrible to deal with. One little trick you can do with a javazon is to use the walls of an area to bounce the javs to hit the enemies again. Which is good to know if you can't just stand up close and use charge strike. I barely make it out of the Radamant quest alive, escaping on one health point. Poison can't finish the job, but walking around on one HP seems like a bad time nonetheless. After heading back in I keep my distance and Radamant gives me the book of skill. The Maggot Lair is the first of many places in hell where things are lightning immune. It's a good thing the Valkyrie deals physical damage and Elisa deals cold damage. So while it's slow, it's not impossible to get through or anything. The monsters that aren't lightning immune are barely even mentionable at this point. Lightning Javazons deal a ton of damage and nothing in the game will stop them. Duriel hits like a truck, but so do I. As long as he focuses his attention on the Valk, I can use Charge Strike to attack him. The damage isn't great, cause I haven't specced into the synergies yet, but a fully powered charge strike is the best boss killer in the game. Every single bolt will hit a boss cause of their size, so if you're dealing 1 to 500 damage per bolt and hitting for 10 bolts at a time, you can get up to 5k damage per jab. At multiple jabs per second, this adds up quick. A lot of speedrunners will tell you that Act 3 is horrible as a lightning javazon, which is true if you're trying to run your way through killing nothing at all. However, if you just take your time, and I mean really take your time, the forest isn't so bad at all. The Valk and the Merc can easily clear it for you. It can take hours, but if you can kill one monster in there, you can kill them all. The Thorned Hulks and Bugs aren't even lightning immune, so you can just clear those out no problem. The worst that can happen in here is something like this extra fast Cursed Conviction Cloud Stalker that just came at me out of nowhere. But just run behind the Valk and she'll take care of it. Just to make it clear, I'm not claiming this is the best experience in the game or anything, but it's really not so bad as people would have you believe. I think a big part of the problem here is that people just don't know how the forest map works. The entire first part of Act 3 is just a map knowledge skill check that is miserable to fail. It's the same in the Flayer jungle, the soul killers and the birds are lightning immune if you roll those, but the rest is all just not immune to lightning. Ergo, free. I know it's a controversial opinion, but the Flayer jungle is one of my favorite areas in the game. The lower Kuras itself is such a revelation after the forest as well, and yeah, I don't know what I was talking about anymore, but um, I'll go ahead and take that piece of streamer loot over there. So, unique ceremonial javelins are the iconic Titan's Revenge. These always have plus 2 to javelin skills and plus 2 regular skills. 30 run walk speed is lovely as well. They roll 150 to 200 enhanced damage. So at 192, these are very solid. 25 to 50 damage is never a downside either. They get 5 to 9% life reach on them, so rolling 9 there is a perfect roll. If all of that wasn't enough, there is also a massive pile of stats on here and a couple of quality of life mods in the form of increased and replenishing quantity. These are literal best in slot for a Javazon, so I rush over to Akara for another respec, getting strength and dex for gear and the rest into vitality. Skill wise I changed nothing. The only thing that worries me at this point is the 881 life, which is on the lower end of things for sure, but as long as I'm careful I can't imagine dying at this point. My gear is just so good. As is tradition on this channel, new gear means almost dying. This time I almost throw a lightning fury into a boss pack of dolls, which would mean instant certain death if that had connected. Good thing I missed. The sewers are rough for kiting things around, but once they start attacking my Valk, the lightning fury gets to do its thing. The rare ring isn't anything special, but figured I'd show it. You can't just run into the council. The best way to fight them is to divide and conquer. Just pull one or two at a time and take them on. Charge Strike makes short work of the ones that aren't lightning immune. The set amulet that drops is an angelic amulet, so I have the combo now if I want it. But lightning javazons don't care about attack rating at all. So once again I have the full combo on a character that just doesn't care about it. Thanks to the titans, jabbing the lightning immune council members isn't too much of a chore. It's not like you can't do it without them. The titans just make it a much nicer experience. The big reason for splitting up the council isn't cause you won't be able to deal with a couple of them at a time. But they just keep healing each other, which is just annoying. The Durance is another area where you just have to take your time and jab through everything. It's more dangerous than the forest cause the models hit way harder than the cloud stalkers. Level 2 is just more of the same, but with dolls, what can I say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. It'll be fine, the worst part of the run is almost over. You can use the blood pools to convince the models they are British and make them queue up to wait for their turn. 
For some reason, why isn't Voidbringer is all the way back in the Duras level 3. So I can't fight Mephisto like normal, cause I don't want to get Wyant into the fight and keep healing Mephisto. The only thing I can think of is to go to the other side and clear up Muffa Dragon Hand. Dragging Mr. Loot Pinata over there and claim the rewards. Act 4 isn't filled with lightning immunes, so everything evaporates at the side of lightning fury again. Good times. I have 83 lightning resist. If there was ever a run where souls shouldn't be a problem, this is it. It takes a lot of jabbing, but for once, the souls aren't a problem. A very nice change of pace. A lightning physical immune crosses my path in the river of flame. A good thing Alisa deals cold damage, so she can deal with it. Streamer loot makes itself known again with a unique ring. Can it be a Bulkathos ring please? No, it can't be a Bulkathos. It's a perfect troll dwarf star though. 40 life, fire absorb and 15 magic damage reduction. I don't get why people don't really like this ring. Those mods are sweet. Hefasto reminds me about how low my life total is when he smacks away over 60% of it in one single hit. It's a good thing he targets the Valk afterwards cause god damn he hit like a truck. The Hellforge gets me a Val rune. The Chaos Sanctuary is more of the same, jab the lightning immunes, obliterate the rest. Set chain boots drop, these are Hazarus' boots. With their 25 fire resist and 20 faster on walk, I decide to wear them over my lightning resist boots. Next up I ring the doorbells and deal with Diablo's interns. Two of them are lightning immune, but nothing I can't jab. It's nice to see his interns are just as trash as mine. Charge strike destroys bosses, so dealing with Diablo isn't a problem. A Lum rune drops in the frigid highlands, opening up a new armor. All I have to do is go back to normal to buy a 3 socket base. The armor I'm going to make is called Lionheart. Hell Lum Fell gets you 20 enhanced damage, but only to the jab for this build. It doesn't work with the lightning stuff. 25 strength, 15 dexterity, 20 vitality and 10 energy. That isn't all though, it also has 50 life and 30 resist all. At 3 life per vitality for the Amazon, this ends up giving you 60 life from the vitality and 50 normally. For a total of 110 extra life. With a respec left, I go to Akara for the final time to do the tryhard thing of specking the absolute minimum into things and using my stats from gear to carry all of it. I usually don't do that because I like being able to switch things around, but I don't know, I just felt like tryharding for a change. It ends up with me getting 1349 life, an infernal pathway to a bigger health pool that will allow me to go through the massive cauldron of chaos that is the last part of Hell Act 5. My resistances in hell are now a thing of beauty and will allow me to safely wish all the monsters sweet dreams from afar. My streamer loot script makes itself known once again in the glacial trail when a grand charm dropped. If finding titans just wasn't enough quite yet, this turns out to be a jav skiller with 38 life. I don't even know what to tell you, like I, I don't know man. Sometimes you just run hard, that's all I can say. My min maxing ends up saving the run when Talik almost slices and dices me into pieces, but I escape with the skin off my teeth right then and there. The same can be said for the Merc who meets her demise in a two person climax with a big explosion at the end. Some light jamming later we end up at the final attempt of the game to kill me, cause the game figured that if souls nor dolls can do it on their own, well why not both? One final jabbing session later the throne room is cleared. The rest of the run wasn't very hard, Javazons are amazing bill runners, so I'm gonna take this time to gush about the Arata set. Despite finding a bunch of items that would have obviously been better than it, I loved doing a run with this. The power level felt very on point for a casual run. The set's focus on getting very high resistances makes it a great choice for hardcore as well. For such a low level set it put up a magnificent performance. Can you do better? Yeah of course you can, we all know that, but seeing as how you could get this set by asking some to pick it up instead of leaving it on the ground if you're online. Or you could easily pick it up while farming some other character. Or if you want to be a purist you could even grind it yourself on a solo self found run from Mephisto normal. And with a level 15 requirement, this felt very powerful, about on par with the level of gear I usually end the run with. So if you're having trouble getting good gear in one of your runs, just try and get this set. The belt sucks, but the rest of it is all good. On screen, Bale is being melodramatic again, meaning the Arata set has cleared the game hell hardcore, clearing another one of the set of runs. I don't know how many I've done at this point, nor do I know how many are left, but we are getting through them. Gear wise I did get extremely lucky on this one, titans are the best in slot item for the build. And I'd take a spirit over almost any other shield as well. The harpoonist grand charm of Vita is just chef's kiss perfect as well. The Lionheart armor is also an unsung hero with tons of life and resists on it. 
Stats wise, it's min maxed, which allowed me to just sneak out the ancient fight. Skill wise, it's max Valk. Max Lightning Fury, Max Charge Strike and points into Pierce to get to 100% Pierce with the Errata set bonus. Thank you all for watching, if you like the content please consider liking, subscribing and I'll see you all in the next one.